it's understandable in a way, but wrong. And, he, and Gladwell does the same thing with Bill Gates. He said, oh yeah, very successful guy, but look at this. A, B, C, D, he worked, he had to be born in this age, he had to be born in this area, he had to have access to this computer thing, all accidentally, you could have access to a computer room where the computers accidentally had a bug so you could work on it whole night, which was all bunch of coincidence. So you say there's no coincidence, or there's a whole bunch of coincidences, and uh, therefore he is not really successful, or it doesn't count or something. And it's also strange because uh, there's a, a external and internal causes because Glethel comes and says a whole bunch of external causes, explain it away, gone is the, 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 the thumbs up or the thumbs down. But if it was internal, if you could say, yeah, it's completely genetically, genet genetically determined, does that make a difference? I mean, yeah, of course it is, it is genetically determined. I mean, uh, if you were a spermatozoa flushed through the toilet, uh, try to work your way up the social ladder from there. Uh, it, it needs to be that you were the, the, the lucky genetic material brought together. Uh, yeah, it is coincidence, but it doesn't make it... Uh, it, take, it seems to take the flair and the mystique of the success. And uh, for some people, it takes the success away or the evilness or the goodness away altogether. And almost all proponents of these causeless fountains get angry instead of curious when you ask what the source of their fountain is. There is often also an asymmetry in the causeless fountains. So uh, in physics, symmetry and truth seem to go hand in hand, so I respect that for the time being here also. So asymmetry people in government, for example, inside the government you can steal and murder and it's called good, outside uh, you're evil, a thief and a hitman if you do the same thing according to the same principle. So there's this asymmetry around this uh, source, the base of the fountain, basically. And uh, God also, God says, thou shalt not kill, but he drowns everyone on the planet with a great flood. So there, at the base of the fountain of the causeless causer, there is this moral flip uh, of 180 degrees. Um, now, God calls the past also, in, by creation, uh, it is said, but he does not cause the future, since you have the free will to choose between good and evil, so you can be blamed for uh, evil stuff. Um, but the strange thing is that God knows what you're going to choose, because he's omniscient, uh, so he could write it down in a list, and yeah, you could not really deviate from that, because then his list would be wrong and he wouldn't be omniscient, so you're not really free, but... You, know, you still have to be free enough to be able to hit over the head with a moral uh, evil and bad th stuff. So, f yeah, Free Willy uh, also said, uh, says that um, actions in the past are fixed, so you cannot go back to the, to the past and change the battle, outcome of the Battle of Hastings or something. The, the past is fixed according to them, but the future uh, uh, could develop in all kinds of directions, not just that you're ignorant, ignorant about what direction it should go, no, it can really go in all directions. And the main reason they think so is likely also the opportunity to hit uh, uh, others over the head uh, with morality. I personally think it makes as much sense to hit someone over the head with a theory of morality as it is to hit them over the head with a correct theory of physics. It makes sense to warn people with incorrect moral theories and to stay clear from them to protect you from the fallout, but that's all. Attributing causes to love is usually also asymmetrical regarding giving and receiving. So, um, for receiving, it's important that they are tied to no causes except the uncaused I, the mystical dead end of causation. So, I want to be loved for just being me, no properties. But for giving love, you want to present it as specific as possible. So, you say, I love her for X, Y, Z, and no other woman who has exactly that specific blend of properties that could have done it for me. Now, the question is, could the uncaused causer in the sky be a projection of the uncaused causer we call the I, bound by this string of unconditional love to the uncaused, unconditional fountain of love in the sky? Okay, listen to that again, maybe. Could the maker of things for which there is no known maker, look at that uh, non stamp collector movie, by the way, so the maker of things for which there is no known maker, could he be the same as the causer of actions for which there is no known causer? the free will I? Could these two logical contradictions be strung together by unconditional love? This would also mean that the more clear you become about the causes of your own actions, the less free will remains, is left, the less free will is left over. 
So the less unconditional love and the weaker your urge to for God will become. So uh, that is also my experience that people who are very religious, they, they are very against psychology and very against getting self-knowledge about what causes their action because that taking away these un this mystery stuff would also remove their uh, blow their gut out of the sky because it is a projection and it's tied by this uncaused love now there's also something uh, strange with mammals if you have birds and um, there was a test where they had the, uh, gave them feeding with a computer but that went haywire and it gave feedings randomly so these mammals these birds they started to perform rituals to get the food and it seems to be that mammals have severe problems with effects for which they cannot understand the causes so the minimum they have to do is to stick a word on it for humans and um, uh, caused like the uncaused eye or an uncaused god and it prevents the mammal from wasting time thinking about these complex causes because it's very hard it's very rewarding but it's very hard to to dig, dig down to the causes and this way control is gained over the complexity by uh, moral intimidation and browbeating of the eye and praying to the uncaused causer so rituals are built around it so you have a rain dance you have giving government powers to change the climate you have sacrifices you have special uniforms and all kind of actions that supposedly influence the uncaused causer now this fountain can never be found in material reality the base of this fountain because it would mean a, a source of endless energy and, and matter and, and, and in reality it does not exist the uncaused causer stuff so they, they find res they have resistance of looking into these uh, causes and binding it to uh, material reality. Binding it to material reality would uncover the principles of its operations. So if you say, well, you have a free will and it's no, we found the causes, it's X, Y and Z that causes it, then it's no longer free. It's now a mechanical effect of X, Y and Z and uh, the causes are revealed and it, it will always happen when you tie it to material reality then causes uh, are revealable and uh, that is has to be prevented by those who want to uh, defend this mystery it would take away the mystique and freedom it end with a quote of Einstein from the determinism randomness debate he had with Niels Bohr and that was this business about causation causes me great distress Feel free to leave comments and rate. Bye bye.